I'm gonna teach you how to build a cabinet. Not from scratch, just from parts. This is a 210, 112, or 212 cabinet. Depending on the speaker baffle size, which you can cut or get custom cut for you very cheaply, you can put any number of different sounding speakers in one single cabinet. Now, most musicians talk about all sorts of limited trademarks and things that I'm not allowed to say, but like Fonder or Mershal or other sorts of things like that. Mersa Boogie. But they really fail to take into account what a speaker and a speaker cabinet does for the town of your specific guitar and or sound. This was custom made by a man some here, well, I don't know, uh, East Coast, probably. It cost enough to ship it. It's pretty light. Now this is what we call a convertible design. Convertible design means that it can operate in either a sealed or an open back enclosure. That will affect the base of your tone. With a sealed cabinet, you're going to have better bass response due to the lack of open and rear and front sound wave cancellation. However, it'll create slightly more volume if you open it up because the speaker efficiency will be increased having to not deal with standing waves. This particular design of cabinet, trapezoidal, is intended to reduce standing waves for ease of sound pressure levels and also for optimal tone. Standing waves are pretty nasty. You get a lot of them in square boxes and rectangles. So when you get just slightly less square, you're doing better because the reflections will not be so out of control and run rampant over your tone. This particular design has a slant back so that the sound, instead of going out, which will typically be at foot level, your feet don't exactly have cochleas, staples, you know, any of those hammer and anvils that you can hear inside your ear. You want the sound to come up and out towards the audience. Unless you're on a four foot stage, you're pretty much screwed. For club musicians like myself and most of the people interested in building their own speaker enclosure and or choosing their own tone, you're going to want the sound to project upwards so a slanted speaker baffle is optimal. The placement on this is not even. It is instead one high and one low, both pointing up. That creates a different sound dimension. Different sound dimensions are best to end all standing waves and also to project at different and more interesting dynamics. I'm now gonna tell you a little bit about the speakers. Now the funny thing about speakers is that they're the last thing in your signal chain. If you're playing an electric guitar of some sort, most people think about the wood, the fretboard and the body. They think about the pickups. They think about tubes or solid state and the preamp tubes or solid state in the power amp. They think about transistors, the ease of electrical design, but they rarely ever think about replacing the speakers. The speakers are the easiest thing to replace, and that's why I'm doing it. This right here is an eminence made out of, in the good old USA. Now this is quite an interesting design. You probably won't hear it in any place except in the good old US of A. This is a 10 inch speaker with a speaker efficiency of roughly 101 uh, decibels at one watt at one meter. That's loud, really freaking loud. It'll be gutsy, good for rock, blues, country, even jazz if you really wanted to have a really oversaturated tone, but it'll handle clean levels very well. Now. When you buy a speaker as the final part of your signal chain, there are several things that you want to take into consideration. The first of all being the sound pressure levels and the speaker efficiency. How loud do you want your speaker? How loud do you want to play? How loud are you going to be playing? 
this might not all be the same answer. The less area on the speaker, the more you're going to have to make the magnet on the back work. The more ribs in the speaker cone, the more surface area, which means the more sound it can push out. When there's a seamless cone, you're gonna get a woodsier tone, more like a 1940s Chicago blues sound, something smoky and clear. This will have more articulation and definition on the high end, piercing treble, Anybody who likes Fonder might indeed enjoy a cone with plenty of ribs in it. The inner voice coil can be made out of several different things. And hurt keys, you'll notice they'll be made out of aluminum, which helps extend the high frequencies by taking the heat from the magnet in the back and dissipating it, creating greater efficiency over the range of sound. And this is made out of paper. Paper is my favorite. Paper creates a nice, warm, organic tone in pretty much anything, since it is organic, if not warm. When you start getting these things heated up, boy, do they punch. This particular speaker is rated at eight ohms. It has a positive and a negative jack, and it is as simple as bending these in and connecting them to your speaker cables as, I don't know, American Pie. A used speaker, will have a, generally a warmer sound, more broken in. It's not like a pair of shoes. It's, they're they're going to be a little stiff at first. The response isn't going to be great. But later on, after they've taken a whooping little whoop ass on the road, they s start to open up, start to extend that frequency range, and the response sounds more dynamic. <laughs> how simple this is. You really do need just like pliers and a screwdriver. For those of you that are a little inept, like myself, at doing things with your hands because you spent your early adulthood on the computer, that's a good thing. Okay, success. All right, I'm gonna show you guys how to connect them. Oh, there's so many pieces. <laughs> Now there's two ways to do this, positive to negative and negative to positive, and uh, positive to positive and negative to negative. Depending on which way you do that, you're going to have series or parallel. Since these are both 8 ohm speakers, if I run them in series, it's going to be 16 ohms. If I run them in parallel, it's going to be 4 ohms. I want to run them in parallel, which means positive to negative, negative to positive. So here... Duncan from Trashville Studios. He's showing you how to put together your own speaker cabinet by ordering speakers and a speaker tab on the internet. You can save hundreds of dollars. Now normally for a boutique cabinet, you're gonna spend thousand dollars getting something like what I just got. Two speakers made by Eminence in the US of A. And a cabinet hand built by artisans. Cabinet cost me $200, speakers cost me less than $100, and that's everything shipped. $300 for your own hand-built tone. 